guess later we'll talk about, um, <coughs> this is on? Later we'll talk about how you're gonna use this information, particularly as it's relevant to human longevity. I guess I, you call your company an information company. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? No. Turn the box on, maybe. How about now? Good. Yeah, yeah we're just saying, perhaps we'll talk about this later, that in fact, what you're really producing is an information base that can be helpful in looking at the many things we're going to talk about related to aging. So let me turn to uh, Hal and ask you the following question. You know, certainly to me, Google is one of the most, if not the most innovative companies. It learned that with all this tremendous revenue, it's investing into research in a big way, innovation. You know, Google X is measuring everything that walks in bow sensors. And so I'm curious to think about what Google's got in mind in aging research and uh, the future, particularly as I see you, and now David Botstein and Cynthia Kenyon, whose work was cited today, National Academy of Science members, National Academy of Medicine members, or joining the company. So tell us a little bit about uh, your vision about where we're going and how, in fact, innovation can help us look at the many challenges that we've heard about today. Yeah, thanks, Victor. Um, well, for those of you who don't know Calico, it's a company that's about two and a half, three years old. It was formed uh, by the former CEO of, of Genentech, Art Levinson, and Larry Page, the CEO of then Google, now Alphabet. And it, it, it arose from uh, something Google does, not commonly, but uh, when they do do it, they make some big investments in things they like to call moonshots. And these are very, very big and bold ideas that are high risk, but they believe if extremely well funded and the right people are there, if successful, can have a massive impact in the world. And so you mentioned a few of these in the introductions. And so Larry and Art discussed the concept of why there isn't more effort spent on understanding the underpinnings of why pathology results from age. And that if this could be understood, significant advances in the world could be made. And so the mission of Calico, just to read it, since a number of people spent a lot of time with the exact words here, is it's a research and development company. It's, it's sort of a hybrid blend between academia and biotech. Um, the mission is really to harvest the advanced technology, some of which we heard about today, to increase our understanding about the biologic processes that underlie uh, lifespan, essentially. And the intent is to, as we gain this information, to be able to develop interventions that would allow people to live healthier and longer lives. We realize this is gonna be a very uh, intense interdisciplinary uh, effort, and that to do this well, and this is a fundamental principle of the company, we're gonna have to take the long view. And one of the sort of models that we're, we're trying to think about our company is to model after one of the great R&D companies, maybe of all time, and, and that actually is Bell Labs. If you think about the advances that were made at Bell Labs, which was basically the research arm of a telephone company, it's, it's pretty staggering, from the transistor to lasers to fiber optics and cellular telephony. There, there's been enormous advances that affect all of our lives. And what the innovation that occurred in Bell Labs was driven by having great scientists work on really important scientific problems, rewarding great science, and allowing people to take a very long view. The, the goal was not to get a product out in 12 to 18 months. In fact, if the goal was to get a product out in 12 to 18 months, my bet is the world would look very different today. The success was driven by knowing that if you get great people to solve a really high level problem, which was how do you network the world, that great things can occur. And we thought this challenge of how do you solve or how do you understand to a great degree the underlying biology of aging had some similarities. So to date, we were two and a half years ago, a couple of people, a handful of folks. Now we're up to the mid-70s. And uh, we have, as you said, three National Academy members who have joined. Uh, David Botstein focusing on uh, the yeast genetics and understanding how uh, nutrients are sensed by cells and the response they have to that. Dan Gotchling and other National Academy members <coughs> made some great advances. Uh, understand the vacuolar ATPase in the lysosome and how pH in the lysosome can get, become dysfunctional with aging and how that dysfunction leads to amino acids 
being uh, sh shuttled in different places, leading to mitochondrial toxicity. And Cynthia Kenyon, who was mentioned before earlier, finding that one base pair change in a worm can double its lifespan. We also have people who are focusing on the genome and epigenetics. Jeff Settleman, who was the head of research at, uh, in oncology at Genentech and former uh, Harvard professor, has joined. Uh, Shelley Buffenstein has joined, who's uh, famous at UT S San Antonio for her work in understanding why the naked mole rat, which was brought up a few times, which is, is, is this little uh, mammal that basically is the size of a mouse, but lives 10 times longer than a mouse. And she's done some really groundbreaking work to understand a little bit more about why is that happening. And so our focus is also on comparative biology. What do we learn from these outlier species, Brands bat, the naked mole rat, other species? Um, in addition to um, the great people that we've hired, we really believe that collaboration is the key to, to innovation. And um, not only do we have a great collaboration with Google that gives us uh, an opportunity to collaborate with them on the machine learning and the IT infrastructures, et cetera, early on in the company's history, we formed a deal with a very innovative biotech pharmaceutical co company called Avvi. And what Avvi decided to do is also take a big bet. They decided to go in with us and co-invest $1.5 billion to help us in this mission. And not only do we have additional capital, but more importantly, we now have access to thousands of folks at AVI who are very, very skilled in many of the technologies needed to take a great scientific idea and translate it into a drug. So medicinal chemistry, high throughput screening, PK, ADME talks, animal models, biologics, capacities, et cetera. So that collaboration allowed us yet another opportunity to collaborate with academia. And we've developed five or six really important collaborations, one with UT Southwestern and Steve McKnight, looking at um, a molecule that he discovered in an unbiased phenotypic screen where he identified this novel NAMPT, which is an enzyme, which is the rate-limiting uh, enzyme involved in the formation of NAD. And in these physiologic assays, traumatic brain injury, ALS, Parkinsonian models, this molecule seems to stimulate neurogenesis in a way that abrogated much of the pathology that results. And we think this may be useful to think about in cognitive aging as well. So a very exciting molecule that with AbbVie now we can develop. We've got collaborations with UCSF. Peter Walter, the recent winner of Alaska, has developed uh, a very interesting assay and found an inhibitor to the integrated stress response, so-called ISRIB. And we think this also might have a really important role in cognition and may be involved in aging as well. We've got a very large collaboration with the Broad. We've got four different projects on various things in aging that are going very well. We're collaborating with the Rockefeller. We've actually announced a very interesting collaboration with Ancestry.com. So leveraging uh, uh, not only just animal models, but what can we learn from familial genetics, which we think could be very important. So as we, as we uh, think about embarking on this, um, I think there's a few take home messages that I wanted to be clear about with, with Calico. First, we really do believe this is an enormously complicated challenge. We've heard this over and over today. We have many more questions that we do have answers, and yet we're amongst the, one of the most important uh, sort of areas of biology is really unknown. And we believe that you have to take a very long view with a deep focus on the biology and not rush into the clinic until you really understand what you're doing. Lots of money and people's time could be spent if we really start guessing. We need to really understand this. We think through the collaborations, this long view, uh, that we can be successful in that. Thank you. What I'm hearing, uh, uh, the following messages. One is get the best minds together and create an environment like the Bell Lab type to let people innovate. And of course, some of your description is really my description also of academia, industry collaboration, and public-private cooperation. But I'm also hearing, unlike maybe some other models, where companies have shareholders to say, where's the last innovation discovery? You have a long-term, what do I call it, sugar daddy? <laughs> Somebody who's funding this for a long time. How long is Google committed to this? You have one shareholder, sounds like, plus Avi. Well, I think the key thing is what you're highlighting, and I think this is very important, and it gets to maybe as we later discuss funding models, to truly be innovative. We believe that you have to take a long-term perspective, and you have to have funding basis for that to happen. If we just try to rush and pretend we understand proteostasis or senescence or, or mitochondrial dysfunction and rush in with some new thing, it's likely 20 years from now we're going to be sitting back going, wow, how did we fail so miserably 
at solving the underlying biology of aging. If you take the long view, over 30 years, 20 years, 10 years, whatever the time period is gonna be, the probability that something comes out that can allow people to live longer and healthier lives goes up. So it's, it's just about not making the focus be on the next 18 to 24 months and getting something that helps the top line revenue, which is a plague of current pharmaceutical companies. Thank you. Joe. 